right. Hello, everyone. My name's uh, Alex Brown, and we are hosting this week's uh, fireside chat with uh, one of our uh, one of our customers, Concrete Frame Associates. So, just want to uh, kick things off today. We'll do uh, quick introductions for everyone in the room, and then uh, go ahead and get started. Um, so, I'll start. Um, Alex Brown, I'm an account manager with Open Space, been with the, the company for about three and a half years now. I work with different trades contractors uh, across the country in uh, mechanical, electrical, drywall, concrete, <clears throat> and a few others. Um, and my background uh, comes in the reality capture space. I worked for a drone company for a number of years uh, before hopping over uh, to Open Space. And I'm joined uh, virtually today by my colleague, uh, Aaron Baker. Aaron, if you want to do a quick introduction of yourself. Yeah, uh, Aaron Baker, uh, solutions engineer over here at Open Space. My background is actually in the construction industry. I used to work for Turner Construction back in the day. Uh, and I'll be running through the platform as, uh, with my colleague, Alex. Uh, nice to meet everyone today. Perfect. And then our uh, special guest today for the, uh, the fireside chat is uh, Ryan Mazur of uh, Concrete Frame Associates. Ryan, if you want to do a quick introduction and background of yourself. Yep. So Ryan Mazur um, with Concrete Frame Associates for going on eight years now. Uh, we're a pretty large commercial concrete company out here in Denver. Um, and I we use open space for going on a little over a year now. And um, we use it primarily in our industry. We do large commercial um, high rises and podium decks, and we have an in house rebar. Um, to um, I'm sure we'll get more into it later, but the primary is just to kind of get a recording of the deck before we place concrete and everything can't be seen anymore. So, if any questions, concerns, or possible um arguments of what is under the concrete comes up we got a good uh pictures and cameras and um, we could go back and look at it awesome thanks ryan and uh you know tell us a little bit more about uh your specific role within cfa um and why you got into the construction industry okay yeah currently i am uh my role is CFA frame manager. So what that means is um, we do full scope, or we do a lot of different um, aspects of the concrete construction offers um, to our customers. Um, when we do anything from just working on walls to decks, and then my job and the jobs I help oversee and my operations is we call them frames, but they're full scope. So full division three package. Um, we do anything with concrete um, that it touches, we perform and manage. Um, so that's kind of what I oversee. And um, I got into construction, did, did a bunch of stuff growing up, decks and labor jobs and then decided to go to college to be an engineer and it kind of morphed into construction management and that's where I'm at today. Right on. Awesome. And uh, tell us a little bit more about some of the, uh, I know you initially deployed open space on a few projects here in Denver. Tell us a little bit more about those projects specifically and, you know, some of the challenges um, that you ran into with them. Okay. Yeah. So the, First job we did it on where we kind of implemented it was 990 Bannock, which is a 16 story, about um, 30,000 square feet of floor. Um, implemented in there, post tension, um, lots of embeds and different, all kinds of different architectural details, recessions and stuff that we're working into the concrete implement it in there. One of the challenges we were coming with up with in the industry is um, as we move forward each year, it seems like uh, construction is starting a little before design is finished. So um, with my position, I'm kind of at the forefront while everyone else has sailed into the sunsets. Uh, I'll get calls year to two years after the fact saying, hey, you guys put this in wrong or um, 
this our you know our doors don't fit our windows don't fit something so we'll come back and take a look and most people don't even know what's going on mm -hmm. at that point or what the original so we go back and open space has allowed us to use one hey you know we put this in something's happened to it since mm -hmm. um or two if in fact we did mess up which we do we can as you can see on this picture we could take a look and see okay is there you know we got to chip in the concrete or core or, um eight inch core or whatever it is we could look back at this kind of just find the position from the drawings on here and so, okay, is anything going to be in the way? Um, if not, we can go ahead and chip and fix what we need to fix. And a lot of times, you know, it need to be fixed anyway. So they're pay us to do the same. And so this is a little service um, extra we could offer our customers. Yeah. And what did this uh, process look like before open space? Would you guys take pictures? at all how, how did that work uh before uh so the process was actually um and i wish i i just got a new phone or i could show you some but it was almost comical so the whole process would be starting a group text with everyone <laughs> everyone associated with the project a year or two years ago or whenever it was and it, you know be, hey you got any pictures of this area and then you get a bunch of, well, this is, I got this one. No, that won't work. Well, I got this one a little closer. And then uh, sometimes it would work out, but uh, we wouldn't be here if it worked out 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Hope no one has a uh, Android in the, the group text that comes up. Yeah. 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 There's all, <laughs> y'all are kicked out. There's always that. And then, uh, you know, sometimes we'd have to lean on our customers, which in certain, Certain scenarios we we don't like to do, um, but sometimes they would have a drone mm -hmm. footage of the deck. But the timing on that uh, was always suspect. So you know sometimes those would you know the drone guy was scheduled the day before and we weren't mm -hmm. one hundred percent complete. So uh, they would say, "Hey, you missed these bars," and we'd say, "No, we got them in." And then they go to their drone footage, and we're like, "Well, we put them in," you know. This was taken the day before the pour, and we put them in as the pour was going. Um, so this this is a way to, you know, our guys, since it's in our control, we wait till everything's 100% to take these yeah. captures. Yeah, one of the uh, challenges that we hear on our end uh, from people in the industry is a hurdle with technology can be adoption and getting people to actually get started and, and get using it. What what was your process like uh, just getting up and running with open space? What was some of the, the feedback you heard from the field, just actually being able to take the captures and see the data that we're looking at right now? Uh, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, we did, the, I think we did a Zoom session with one of you guys and walked us through the process. And we did a few captures in here. Uh, besides that, I'd say minor little bumps in the road um new we'd have to replace the cameras didn't have microchips in them so we'd go out and capture um but besides that it's been pretty uh, seamless you know i'll have one of my guys that done it train a new guy when he hasn't done it and mm -hmm. uh it's usually just one one capture kind of side by side and then after that we as long as the guy's got the camera and the program um, I just get the notifications that they're they've been captured. I just gotta stay on top of them to make sure they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And outside of uh, just kind of the 360 captures we're looking at, I noticed that one of the features uh, your team has been using is the the field notes function. Um, you know, could you tell us a little bit more about some of the the issues um, that your your team has been tracking through these field notes? Yeah, so this is a good example, I believe. Yeah, he's on 1158 Delaware. So this is a good example. We're actually just uh, doing rebar only install on this. Um, so my my team isn't there 100% of the time. Um, so this would be a scenario where um, puts in the capture 
you know, the day before, and then he doesn't have time or whatever, and he could have someone out there like, hey, did you get those bars in that we talked about that were missing? Mm -hmm. So they're sending him a picture and have come in here and throw it in the field notes. That's a good example. And then um, they're a good example, which I'm sure one of those, you know, engineer walks and decides to change something. So, and uh, sometimes, most of the time we, it's minor and, you know, this was probably, you can see the picture up there, probably, you know, add a few bars around that embed to the left. So they add the bars off a of scrap um, or that scrap is actually something that's supposed to be used on the next pour. Um, and this, it's, uh, it's also become a tool for our project managers and cost management. Um, so we could, they could look at this and go back and say, okay, hey, we stole, you know, eight number ten, 10 feet long to suffice a uh, engineer request on site on this job walk. And um, he could go back and place a change order off of that and use mm -hmm. these captures or field notes as um, additional information back up for the cost. Nice. Awesome. And I think one of the uh, one of the other ways I'm not sure if it's this project or another one that they've been using as well is the uh, the model comparison, comparing the photos um, against the uh, the 3D BIM model. Any ways that you or your team uh, has been able to to use that function so far? Uh, I have not been involved in that. Okay, I mean, I've been using it. I do not know how to work that feature. Okay, so. perfect. Yeah, I, I know uh, that was something that we discuss more with uh, Nicole on the engineering side of things. Okay. So maybe a, uh, a better question for her. Yeah, I'd have to get with her on that. And, you know, final thing I, I want to ask you, Ryan, is, um, you know, for anyone who might be watching this webinar that does pretty similar work to y'all in the, the concrete uh, framing industry, and they're interested in using or trying out open space, what advice would you give them in order to how to get started and also you know how to help potentially sell this to their upper management i would say uh just pull the trigger i mean we were we we're gun shy on it um there's obviously you guys provide a pretty amazing service here that we're probably not tapping into half its potential um to be honest um so the the cost is um reflective of that so i don't i think we could even get more bang for our buck out of this if we needed to um but just as we're using it it the it only takes one or maybe two scenarios where someone's telling you you didn't put anything in or um one of the core chipping or coring scenarios i told you earlier it only takes one of those and the thing pays for itself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, when I started, it was, I had a digital camera attached to my vest. I'd go around <laughs> and take as many pictures as I can. And then a, a year after a PM would try to find it for some issue and it wasn't on the folder. So they call me and I'd have to go back through and download them all. It's just, it's, the amount I we ask our field engineers and project engineers to do this these days to have them take a thousand pictures and then have to go in and upload them to a shared cloud. It's just it's unnecessary with something like this. And then this, I mean, this is equivalent to a million pictures. So they they can never get as many pictures as what a capture provide you as far as informational. I mean, just right now as Aaron's scrolling around these, uh, you can't see me pointing, but scroll uh, the bay of sleeves right there where your cursor's at, you can see they're about to put mm -hmm. the bars in. So I, um, our rebar manager is fighting right now because we put in a change order for all the trim steel around that. Um, and he put a lot of work into the engineer wanted it. So moving forward, we made sure we had enough bar. And they're telling us that 
there's no way we use that much bar. So mm -hmm. he's going through using this, saying we absolutely did. You could see it right there. Perfect. So it's a good example. Awesome. Great. Well, I think that about wraps wraps it up for today. So, you know, Ryan, um, Aaron, really appreciate you guys both uh, joining our uh, our fireside chat. If you have any questions on open space or maybe you want to connect with Ryan and uh, ask him some questions directly, uh, feel free to reach out to me. My email is alex.brown at openspace.ai, uh, which will be included in the email with the recording. Um, you can also reach out to me by phone. My number is 949-257-9847. And uh, thanks so much for joining today, guys. Take care, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Okay.